lobular carcinoma of the invasive type. Once again, they do arise from lobules. They start, they originate from TDLUs, as do DCIS and IDC. And therefore, ILCs can occur in men. They can be associated along with DCIS and IDC. And the cell type is often low grade, though they can mimic each other. So this is how a TDLU looks like on mammography. And this is how we see it in normal histology. And this is when we define the so-called asini within the lobules. You have a terminal duct, you have interlobular stroma, inter intralobular stroma, interlobular stroma. So you should be clear about these definitions when I refer to them. Once again, ILC occurs in as many as 10% of breast carcinomas, wide range from as young as 28 years to older six decades. Bilaterality, very common, multicentricity. Pathologists often miss this disease, especially in the metastatic form. And with increasing incidence, we need to understand that we cannot afford to miss these lesions because of hormonal replacement therapy. The clinical findings, again, are not very distinct. The lumps are vague. They can be radiologically occult, less often associated with microcalcification. They produce what is a low density mass on mammography, and MRI may be more useful. As I said, no specific cross features, poorly defined pale tumors. Size can be very difficult to us because uh, for, to assess because of the poor characteristics and ill-defined areas of the tumor. And they may be difficult to get your exact T size. The average size is usually around 2.5 centimeters. The variants of invasive lobular carcinoma include the classical type, solid, tubular alveolar and the pleomorphic and we quickly over the next five minutes run through these they are also discohesive cells small meek looking with very little pleomorphism they show intracytoplasmic vacuoles they do not produce a host reaction typically they don't produce too much of tils occasionally they may and lcis is often present in around 66 percent of cases so this is the circumferential growth of the lobular carcinoma cells, meek looking cells growing all around the ducts in an absolutely targetoid fashion. This is why we call it target. This is the bullseye, and that's the entire target. The desmoplasia causes what is called the Indian pile pattern. This is the low part and the high part, how they are moving in a line. I don't know why this term came about, Indian file. Being from the army, it makes me feel that there are Indian army soldiers in a file. The classical variant, as I said, does not produce much of a host reaction. They just infiltrate the fat and there's hardly any response of the body's stroma. I mean, stroma in the sense that they don't produce at the expanding edge of the tumor. They do not produce too many tumor infiltrating lymphocytes. Intracytoplasmic lumina are evident within the cords and the Indian files. There will be associated LCIS in 65% of cases. And this was the classical form. The variants which we will now cover are approximately 23%, which means to say that majority of the times, that is around 75%, we have the typical Indian file pattern. Now, in the variants, the cytology of the cells is identical. It's monomorphic, it's meek looking, but the architecture is not very classical, and that can confuse you. The alveolar variant will have the meeker cells. The entire cluster will still appear discohesive, but they will be in the form of alveoli. They may be a little more atypical, maybe not as meek and monomorphic, and they may at times show a more abundant cytoplasm. So please beware of the alveolar variant. This is just to show you a higher phot photograph. The cytoplasm, as you can see, is more abundant. And even the cells are not that monomorphic, as I showed you in the previous variety. There is a solid variant of lobular carcinoma, 
which has meek looking cells in this cohesive sheets but they are so tightly packed that they don't give you an uh, impression until you look for the particular vacuoles it can often be associated with tubular carcinomas when you can call it tubular lobular and here you have the typical angulated beaks of tubular carcinoma along with the indian file of lobular of uh, the invasive lobular so you have a variant now called tubular lobular carcinoma so these are the tubular elements and this is the indian file cords of lobular element the last of the variety is the pleomorphic carcinoma you can see that there are intracytoplasmic vacuoles but the cell size is rather large and of sometimes it can look a little bizarre high part of the same intracytoplasmic vacuoles are present everywhere but some cells have prominent nucleoli and appear quite large and then we call this the pleomorphic lobular invasive carcinoma this is some high part which can look even plasma cytoid in places cells which are looking very bizarre mitosis also more than normal and in such situations it would better it would be better to use to first look for the intracytoplasmic lumina apocrine differentiation look for foci of lcis because this variant has an aggressive clinical cause and it's important not to miss it on a core biopsy specifically or an excision biopsy the infiltrate may be very subtle at times with very sparse cellularity so you must keep a high index of suspicion and if in doubt perform a immunohistochemistry and even look for areas where they are specifically if there is an associated chronic inflammation which you are likely to miss one of the rarer differentials could be a non hodgkins lymphoma and that is also discohesive they do show large atypical cells with pleomorphic nuclei clumped chromatin prominent nucleoli but as you know they will be cd20 and lca positive and ck negative also the incidence of non hodgkins lymphoma is much un, much relatively much uncommon in than a lobular carcinoma sometimes they can be met, mixed with inflammation and they are so deceptive and so surreptitious that you will not even notice them but please see at the periphery is the lymphoid infiltrate and here you have the cords of lobular carcinoma hiding in between this is becomes very important in a core biopsy or an excision biopsy where you are suddenly seeing some very large pleomorphic cells and these can often be missed if you don't concentrate the use of immunohistochemistry i have already brought out that e cadherin is lost where the steroid hormone receptors are concerned they usually show erpr positivity specifically in 87% of cases her2 can often be negative in in almost 100% of cases except surprisingly in the pleomorphic variant where it can be positive so erpr can be positive it is the pleomorphic variant and it is positive in a high percentage of cases the last slides the grading of even uh, lobular carcinoma does remain of value and we have to continue to grade lobular carcinomas please remember that majority of them would be in grade 2 almost to the tune of 75% but when you have mixtures like tubular lobular please usually try and grade them as grade 1 because the tubular component pulls the whole grade down and when you have a pleomorphic component then it is better to upstage and call it grade 3 even if you used cadherin cadherin is lost but the cells are pleomorphic then it is better to call it grade 3 otherwise the prognosis is similar to that of breast carcinomas of ductal type they uh, the the multivariate analysis shows that the prognostic significance lies in stage the t size and the nodal status nodal uh, metastasis in uh, in invasive lobular carcinoma 
is to the tune of 30 to 43 percent. And this is showing you a microphotograph where you have a lobular carcinoma in diffuse infiltrate of sheets of discohesive cells within the parenchyma of the normal lymphoid cells. They have a abundant cytoplasm, high NC ratio, prominent nucleoli, relatively uniform cytology, but these are all malignant cells. Even the spread of metastasis is different from that of duct carcinomas. They metastasize to the bone marrow, orbit, peritoneum, retroperitoneum, leptomeninges, gastrointestinal tract, and can even lead to Krukenberg tumors or pulmonary and pleural metastasis. So this is just showing you a large bowel. They're very different from where the usual duct carcinomas metastasize, which is often liver and lung. Here we have bone marrow, orbit, peritoneum, more commonly. This is a colonic uh, uh, mucosa with the submucosal region showing a classical metastatic infiltrative lobular carcinoma. The treatment can be either breast conservation or MRM with or without radiotherapy. The survival and local recurrence rates, as I said, are similar to infiltrating duct carcinoma depending on the TNM status. The recurrence rates can be as late as 10 years or more. With that, I have briefly tried to cover uh, the entire spectrum of uh, ALH, LCIS, and ILC with all the various subtypes and their mimics and the usefulness of ILC. I have not gone into molecular for want of time, and most of our centers do not do molecular. So that's a separate subject by itself. So with that, I uh, would conclude my talk.